Good evening, everyone. Uh, it's quite full today, so I'm happy to see so many people, so many fa uh, familiar faces as well. Before I start, I want to start with a quick game. Doesn't require you to, to to get up or anything like that. Just to understand who I'm speaking in front right now. So, how many of you raise your hand? How many of you are uh, SDRs? All right. How many of you are AEs? Too busy, huh? End of queue. Uh, <laughs> all right. How many of you are from marketing ops? Nice. Um, campaign managers? Do we have any? Awesome. Um, founders, agencies, the crowd. All right, so that, that's pretty awesome to see uh, such a variety. So that's, that's great. Good job. Uh, so my name is Or Moscovich. I'm, I'm leading the global ABX at Upsvar. I worked there the last, uh, I'm there for four years today with uh, um, different roles. And um, actually this um, existing role, I think this is the, the best role I ever, I ever had. Because um, it bring, brings together so many um, skill sets that I learned with time, um, which I found very, very exciting, and I'm here to share it with you. Um, a little bit about AppSlyer. So AppSlyer is a platform that allows app owners, uh, product uh, managers, and, and, and grow teams as well uh, in the mobile ecosystem to get a lot of insight about the different installs that, um, um, people install uh, with their apps, uh, in-app events, fraud protection and detection, and so many other things. Um, so this is what AppSphere does. Um, besides of that, I also founded just a few months ago um, a Facebook community on Facebook called ABX Israel. So if you want to deep dive and learn more about ABX, different strategies, different pains, uh, different companies uh, deals with, and, and many other things. Um, you can scan it or view it later on. So th that's all. This is the, the, the promotion. I finished with that. Great. Sorry for the question. Do you mind explaining what ABX is? I'm not sure. Yeah, so we're here to discuss what ABX is all about. Um, all right. So, so today I'm going to cover what? Yeah. <laughs> keep keep uh, with, uh, with the questions. Um, <laughs> So, so today we, we're going to talk about what is ABX, why we need it, what types of challenges uh, different companies are facing while trying to incorporate ABX practices and framework uh, in the organization. Uh, I'm going to share with you some best practices on how you can basically apply uh, ABX motion tomorrow morning in your organization uh, without, without a lot of big uh, uh, investment in, in, in new uh, tech stack and, and things like that. Um, so let's start with that. So <clears throat> ABX, some of you know it as ABM. Essentially, it's the same thing. Uh, it's, it's just like how you name it. And, and we decided at Upstart that the best thing to describe it should be ABX. Why? Because it's not a marketing thing. It's not a marketing initiative. Uh, ABM, account-based marketing. ABX, account-based experience. You could name it different names. It doesn't really matter. But what does matter is like what people understand, okay, and how people uh, take it uh, moving forward. So we want like to take it to take the marketing out, out of the equation as, as fast as we can to make sure that everyone aligned that it's like a cross company effort. So ABX is a go to market strategy where sales and marketing are aligned and focus their time and resources on an agreed upon sets of target accounts that we want to do business with. So in each company, it could be different. Some would be like uh, for more like mid-market, some would be more in for enterprises, some will try to target hundreds or thousands of accounts, some will focus more around like a dozen or so accounts. So it, it it's very depends on your company, your goals, where your market is at, so so many other factors. What's also cool about ABX framework is that it can be applied on different stages of your funnel. So it can be applied as part of your uh, new pipeline, new logo uh, generation. It can apl be applied on retention expansion. And it also could be applied, which I care, which I guess a lot of you um, 
see it right now and, and you know, feel it very, very closely to your heart is uh, churn, churn prevention. Okay, so, so you, can, you can apply it only for one of the pillars, you can apply it for uh, uh, multiple pillars as well. So how are we actually gonna measure uh, ABX? Again, in each company, what you would like to measure and what you probably will be measuring is, uh, will be different. So again, like for, for some companies, it could be like account penetration, like how many uh, relevant contacts I'm, I'm like cur currently in, in a relationship, uh, how many people we're engaging with at the moment. In terms of deal progression, um, did we manage to really push the account down the funnel from a stage, let's call it like unaware to aware or to engage, or did we manage to push the account to open a new opportunity? You can also see and, and measure the number of opportunities, um, the, the ASP, uh, like what's the deal size, and the percentage of how many clause one did you, did you get. So all of these things, these are the things that we feel at Upswire, and again, every company could take and, and build their own KPIs. This is what we look at uh, when we want to measure our ABX um, ROI and success. So if there is like one slide that I think is, is the most important slide for my presentation, is this one. I will take a break. So on the right, what you see, this is like a, a classic sales funnel, okay? For new pipeline generation, okay? Um, so we wanna create awareness, we wanna create interest, we wanna push the account down the funnel until they buy something from us. The handshakes you see here, this is sales and marketing handshake. And other thing that we see here, this is account journey. So when, we, when I put my uh, ABX glasses, I see accounts or break accounts into different levels. So the way we, we decide to break it down is by aware, uh, unaware, aware, engage, opportunity in clause one. Um, there are different ways to do it. Um, there are like ABM platforms you can, you, can do, you can play with that and build the logic. You can, you can use your like marketing automation tools and so on. But the idea is like to really bucket your, uh, or to build a logic behind the account progression to make sure that you're able to map that. Another thing is that we also, I wanna also emphasize the difference between traditional inbound structure as we know it today to ABX all bound structure. In inbound structure, which most companies are currently uh, uh, work at, marketing, they work on getting leads. Great, okay. Then these leads are being nurtured. Probably if I ask here, what's your M MQL logic? We will get like, I don't know, like 200 different answers. Um, it's super hard to really determine what's the right M MQL scoring and so on. So this is like the traditional handshake. Once the lead become an MQL, then it passes to uh, sales. More or less, this is the, the, the process as it stands today. In ABX, I don't care about leads. I don't care about MQLs. What I care about are two things. One, marketing and sales, holding hands together through the entire funnel, okay? There is no like, okay, uh, now the lead is MQL, bye-bye, I'm gonna drink my coffee, no. We're gonna work together on the account or the accounts until we're gonna get the close one, and, and obviously this is also like an offset triangle where if you wanna look on upsells and so on, it's continuous. But let's now just stick on, on the new pipeline. So we have these like different stages. We have this end shake that is like constantly marketing and sell. These are like the, the uh, 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 important teams or the primary teams. Obviously PDMs is, are part of it. CS could be and so on. Um, and what we care about is making sure that we're able to capture signals. 
and by signals you should see it as any type of touch point that can be relevant for cells so they can get that uh, uh, um, de get that signal and to re-engage with the contact or the lead for uh, for the sake of the, the example so all these signals should be answering few things one it needs to be clear like who did the signal when the signal happened and the context so this is an example of um, how we look at, on on the um, the next I would say flow so it doesn't it, it's not really about only in the engage phase like what we're trying to do here what I try like to um, to explain in this slide is we have multiple or you guys as well you have multiple tech stack in your position as we speak right now you have like CRM a marketing automation tool a, a lot of different uh, um, tech stack in place what you should um, think about is whether your sales teams actually um, getting the right information to help them to not only like spray and pray but to really act based on uh, um, like you know like a, a context-based uh, uh, information that they're getting so things like let's say uh, one of um, one of your contacts just fill up a form okay we want to make sure although it's very basic you you would be surprised how many companies do not really uh, make sure that their information passes in the right way to their SDR so if someone fill up, fills up the form we want to make sure that it gets to the right uh, uh, salesperson that he knows exactly what type of uh, content they, they read uh, when and so on think about even email marketing okay let's say um, I have an account with uh, 50 people inside that uh, were opting to my newsletter or my uh, uh, drip, com drip campaigns. So every time when someone not only open the email, but also when someone clicked on one of the emails, we want to make sure that we're capturing that information and, and, and make sure that the right salesperson is also aware uh, that that action just happened. Okay, so all these things uh, uh, you need to really make sure that you collect that data and, s and send it to the right person. Things like even G2, okay? G2, with G2 right now, you can get information about which accounts are searching for you, searching for your competitors, okay? These are extremely important signals that you need to, to make sure that you, you know, first that you know about, and secondly, that the right people in your organization are aware, the ones that are working on the account. Um, for example, LinkedIn, how many of you are using uh, SalesNav? Okay, uh, in SalesNav you can also send things that called smart links. In Upsar we have actually a product uh, with the same name, but never mind. Um, and, and what you can do is when, when you share that link to someone and, and they often click on the link and open uh, uh, the content and read it you can get <coughs> a signal back saying like all right that specific individual just read your content for five minutes okay this is extremely important intense signal that you want to capture and make sure that your sales team or the specific salesperson who handles the account is getting without that you're working in a, in a some some you have a lot of blind spots that's my my point so making sure that you map all the different tech stack again this is just an example but i'm sure you have your own and you have a lot make sure that you know what you can get out of it and how you can pass the information to the relevant people so i'm going to quickly touch base on uh, what are the five different uh, uh, ways to start an abx uh, uh, initiative in your organization we're going to speak about defining uh, a clear abx framework getting buying from the right people uh, build dedicated teams start small and scale and measure everything so the one thing you should start with icp research like okay duh but you really need to make sure that you know what you're doing okay uh, ask the right question make sure that you speak with enough 
people from your in industry, um, that you really build the right personas, mapping the right pains and challenges. All right. Once you have that, you can move on to um, the second uh, step, which is to define a, a clear plan and roles and responsibilities. In that matter, if you work with marketing and sales, making sure that they know what's your, you know, what's your firm, how your framework uh, looks like, what each uh, of the team members needs to do, put it on a Gantt or something like that, or Monday, Asana, make sure that everyone has, uh, uh, oh. everyone have visibility for that, super important. And infrastructure. Even if you start small, make sure that, that the most critical uh, uh, components are being measured properly. Um, that will save you a lot of time and a lot of manual work. Another thing that is super important is to really get uh, buy-in from um, senior management. And when I, what I'm referring here is that it's extremely important that ABX framework is not like something that is nice to have. This is a, a very strategic, uh, um, I would say, initiative or um, way to see how the business should work. So it must come from, from even the CEO. Okay, so this is something that needs to start top down. Without it, it's going to be very hard for you to apply any uh, ABX uh, motion in your organization. The next thing is about building a team. So in Upstar, what we did, since it's a company of uh, six, 1,600 employees, we're quite big and very, uh, uh, um, we, have, we work uh, uh, in a lot of places. So what we did, we, in each region, we created an, a local ABX squad with these people inside. So including myself, we had a growth lead, like a, a regional growth lead, a field marketer, SDR lead, sales lead, and sometimes also some help with, from PDMs and so on. This was very helpful for, for, for us as a company and for me uh, uh, specifically to make sure that we have the right buy-in in the regional spectrum to move fast and to be very aligned and transparent with what we do. Think about also out of the box. Think about different types of uh, uh, content that you can really create and engage with this uh, account. So you can break it down to one too many, one too few, one to one. Again, really depends on your, how many resources that you have, the level of uh, matureness of the program that you can run. But um, think about channels like uh, gifting. Okay, I know that actually not a lot of, of companies these days, the, at least what I'm aware of, uh, utilizing this like a direct email approach. So gifting is a great way to warm up existing contacts, personalized landing pages, speaking to, to the account, what's the account pain or what's the industry pain in general, make sure that the experience that you tailor for these uh, um, accounts really relevant for them. And think about like creating different types of audits or even uh, um, as, like videos that can come from sales and other teams as well, make it uh, uh, as, as uh, uh, personal as you can. Last thing is about reporting. What's not been measured probably didn't happen. So really make sure that all the information that you gather is well tracked. Um, on Salesforce, usually this is what I prefer. This is where salespeople spend their time with their, with their, when they're not at uh, home. Um, so use that. Uh, and another thing that we, we did is we also uh, made sure that all the, the important and relevant signals that we pass to sales also captured in um, the activities objects in Salesforce. This is that, that specific change really, really helped us to uh, better explain sales what we do. And now they also have a lot of visibility. So they get a lot of context about like what the different signals that we're sending them using this object. Again, everyone can do whatever work for you, but that was a, a great way to do that. Thank you very much. Sorry, we don't have enough time for questions, uh, but I will stay here. Thank you.